let me show you how to turn this into this. In this episode of Aston1936.com, we've reached a milestone in my process of fitting an Aston Installations HD infotainment upgrade. The table's mostly clear. Um, and if you still, if you actually with your kit have ordered an optional front parking camera and a rear parking camera, now's the time to go watch the videos on how to do those. But if you weren't doing the parking cameras, your system is ready to, to start, you know, commissioning. So I've already installed the screen, the power harness, the most interface, the multimedia interface, and in the last video I even did a test connection of everything to make sure everything works together as a system electronically. Now comes what I consider one of the harder parts. The anal retentive detail of part of you needs to come out and it's time to make this whole rat's nest of cables that you're going to have in your passenger compartment floor into something beautiful. So let's go over to the bench and I'm going to show you which uh, sort of tools and supplies I'm going to use uh, as part of that process for me. So you're going to need to use your wits. Um, you're going to figure out what's necessary for your car and just use some basic types of supplies to put them together. Now I asked James at Aston Installations, you know, what's the right thing to use? And his comment back uh, over WhatsApp was, zip ties are your friends. So I've got two sizes of zip ties that I plan on using. Um, I have eight inch ones uh, and I have some baby four inch ones that are likely the ones I'm gonna use for most of the small bundles. And if I need anything larger, I'll go with the eight inch. I've got some uh, cable tie mounts or you know wire mounts. I may or may not use these, but basically these are stick them on one side and uh, they have a little clip that you just tuck the wire into on the other side. So I have a few of those in case I need them. I have this, which is not electrical tape. This is wiring harness fabric tape. So this is essentially what you would see the factory wiring harnesses wrapped up with. It's uh, a better choice, I think, than electrical tape, especially if I try to bundle uh, some long segments of cabling together. So this was an easy Amazon item we'll have a link to in the comments down below. I also have this stuff, which is fabulous. This is self-stick Velcro. So if it's something you want to connect and reconnect multiple times, you could basically cut off a little strip of this and use this as a, instead of a zip tie. It's also soft and fuzzy, so if it's up against something, it won't rattle. So I'll have a link to that as well. This is electrical tape. Here's what we're going to do with it. Not going to use it at all. Um, electrical tape just leaves goo and residue after a few years, so I'm going to stick to these types of solutions. Um, and to go along with these things, you might need a, a little wire cutter to cut the zip ties. You might need a knife if you're going to cut some uh, uh, space in the foam that's in the floor of the car, and maybe a pair of scissors if you're cutting some of the fabric tape. So whatever you need, you'll dredge out of your arsenal in your garage. So get, let's go over and have a look at the challenge. So here we are, back in the pit of despair. You'll be looking at all these wires, probably like I am, going, well, where do I put them all? And uh, we've got a lot of stuff to tidy up, but we're going to approach it one wire at a time. I'm not going to show you how to do every single step. Um, I'm going to do it sort of in time lapse and pieces. You're just going to have to use your wits a little bit, but I'm going to show you uh, in time lapse how I do it, and then I'm going to show you the final result, and that should be enough to guide you on how you're going to tackle it and I'll cut in any tips that I think of along the way. The, the basics of it are that Aston Installations wants to tr has suggested that this main multimedia module gets cut into the foam floor over here and that you put your most interface module up in the corner there and that you run your uh, power uh, main power trunk cable set down underneath along here and connect and then right here where the cables will be coming down from the center console part the multimedia parts down here on the floor this little pocket behind the carpet is where you because your knees are never going to be bumping into this we're just basically going to try and put 
all the cables as tidily bundled as we can into this space. Without further ado, let's go to the time lapse and start putting it together. So let's get the center console wiring dressed up. Um, this is pretty fiddly, so I thought I'd actually talk to you about how to do this one. And we'll do a little high speed in a few of the sections. So there's a lot of spaghetti here, but we have to actually get it to fit in a really tight space. So just pay attention and see how I, I root all the wires and uh, yours will turn out hopefully just as nice. So I'm gonna start by getting, I want all the cabling to come down the side because this will be coming up towards where I have all the wiring for the multimedia module. So I wanna make a little harness. So I'm gonna bring each of these heavy cables over. Now this cable is the one that goes for the dash cam. So it's kind of tethered in two ways. So it, it reaches its sort of length there and we have this little extra bunch of cable to deal with. And then I've got the other cables from the button controls that I'm gonna swing along. I think I'll start there. I'll just kind of keep this stuff up out of the way for now. And I'm gonna bring this stuff along and make a nice little harness. So this is a perfect time to use some four inch zip ties. And then do another one. So now I have this chunk of extra cable because I have everything lying along here in a nice little bundle and I have a little sort of strain relief here that holds it to the body. So this extra loop of cable, what I'm gonna do is see if I can get it to fold back on itself here. And I still want it to all fit you know, out of sight in the car. So I don't want this end of it to be any farther forward than the front. So that's starting to work out pretty well. I've got a nice uh, clean bundle basically that comes down uh, the side of the rig. Everything should clear just fine. So now what I wanna actually make is a, a wiring harness uh, more officially out of this part. I don't wanna have all these parts still flapping around loose. So this is where I'm gonna use my wiring harness tape so you wanna get all your wires lined up. The more anal retentive you are, the higher the quality of your finish will be. So that's that section. Now I'm gonna do about 12 inches. And you see how I've kind of straightened these all out I'm gonna do about the first 12 inches going this direction. So I did 12 inches and then I'm gonna put a zip tie on here just as a strain relief to keep it all in place. So now we have just, you know, uh, a little bit of the cabling harness to deal with that will uh, tidy up inside the car. So we're here in the car now, it's time to fit the center console back in. But the very first step now is to get our harness to go through. So I'm just gonna sit this on my lap and I'm gonna pass the wiring down. There's a, and there is a little space that you can, basically I can see clearly. And there's the wires, you know, 
they're coming out. So once you have your harness through, you're well underway. Pass that down carefully. So now I'm going to worry about re-engaging the front tabs. And now there's a little pocket of space where essentially the harness slips along there. There's the power seat controls. We're basically just trying to get everything tucked in so it runs along the right side of the console. And now it's time to get these electrical connectors tied back up. So I'm just going to go in the reverse order of when we fitted, took it out. Got a nice positive click there. Nice click there. Now I have some connector here that's not used, so that was just sitting to the side. So I'm a little worried that the cigarette lighter outlet is going to interfere and hit the top of the, tr the torque tube tunnel. Um, but we're going to soldier on here. So we've got the one connector for the illumination ring, which is back here. And then we got our tooth plug for the actual power port itself. And that's really long now. I'm worried that's going to hit. And before I even hook up these front buttons here, I'm going to see if this will sit down. No, this is this is interfering. And I don't know if, yeah, yeah, I'm looking down the side here. And if we look in here just barely with the camera, I can see what everything's balancing on is those orange connectors of the uh, the cigarette lighter socket resting on top of the aluminum torque tube tunnel. So that's a problem because it's not like it's close. We are an inch and an inch high at the back because it's acting as a, a pivot in the middle. So we are a long ways from fitting. So uh, let's pull this out and head over to the bench and see if we can figure out what to do about it. So we're back at the bench again, and I can demonstrate what the problem is. What I, what I did is I took a, a ball of uh, tin foil and I just loosely made it into a ball. I sat it on the transmission tunnel, and then I put the whole thing in without any of the wiring connected so that, and it sat right down all the way. So essentially it crushes the ball and it shows you the actual clearance that you have left. So if we come in from a sideways look and we basically use this to show it, that's how much clearance there is between the electrical connections on the cigarette power point and the actual torque tube tunnel. There is like a millimeter of space there. And they have that huge, maybe three quarter of an inch straight connector that comes on, which sticks way up here. Um, so it's a, definitely a space issue um, and we've got to solve it to move forward. So Aston installations on some of the cars had thought, ah, okay, this on, I think uh, James was telling me on the Vantage, they printed this, this cool little um, spacer ring and where it would actually go is you would take out your cigarette lighter and your plug and it would sit, you put it in first so this would kind of prop it up as a, as a spacer and uh, hold this part out a little further. And the result should be that it reduce, it pulls this part down and gives you that, you know, maybe a two or three millimeter additional amount of clearance. I've already tried putting this in. It's a long ways from still working. Um, I need to come up with a different solution. So I've been thinking about it and one of the things I thought we could do is if the problem is that, and we wanted to use this power point, well, what if we use the Aston installation spacer that got us a couple of millimeters. And then instead of using the factory uh, harness end, we switched over and we crimped on or did something where we had a right angle connector. So here you can see a, a right angle power connection you know, that you can just get at the local, you know, automotive store. And so those would push on and you can sort of see in the clearance that might be there, we might just get away with this. And my idea was instead of cutting the wires off on the factory harness that I was going to 
make myself a little mini harness. So I was gonna take this part, crimp two right angles onto that end, and then take two of these straight spade type crimp on connectors, and these will push into the factory connector. So essentially I'll have this little extra harness that I could just again wobble away underneath here, and then that can just hook up to the factory harness and life would be good. So that was gonna be my approach until I thought, well, why am I having this huge fight with this thing anyways? When I've, I'm not a smoker, all I'm ever gonna do with that is put a USB power adapter in it, probably if I even did anything with it. Although the kit now includes a USB port. But I thought, man, it would, all I would probably do is put a USB quick charge port in there. So I did a little Googling. And lo and behold, you can just get a complete replacement cigarette lighter uh, component that's substantially shorter. Uh, and this has a quick charge three port, a quick charge four port um, that you could use even with like an iPad. Um, so I just figured do away with the PowerPoint altogether. It just has a plus and minus uh, connection on the back. And then I'm just gonna use the same idea and I'm gonna make right angle push on connectors and my little harness is I'm gonna plug into the, the same way into the factory harness and solve my problem altogether. So let's get on with that. All right, factory Ford power outlet retired to someplace safe. So now I have my opening and I have my aftermarket kit here. So the only thing I was worried about with the aftermarket kit is there's very little clearance in there in the 3D printed version of the ashtray here uh, for the little nubs, you know, basically for the threaded ring to go around and around. I was worried there wouldn't be clearance to get by there. And what I found for this particular part, all I had to do was trim off the raised portion. And you can see here, I've taken the raised portion off on two of the sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit the power port in. And then I'm gonna spin down. We'll only be able to spin down to about this far and now we're starting to hit. So I'm gonna spin this back to where I've got my carved off pieces and I can just push this whole thing through so now I'm gonna actually turn this cigarette or the, you know, the USB adapter to tighten it into the hole. And I wanna get it lined up so it's upside down, so I need about half more turn. So I've got it pretty much snugged up and I'm just gonna to try to bring the ring around Snug it as best as I can. And now I'm gonna check that I have it square in the opening. And that looks fantastic. So essentially, out with the cigarette power port, in with the quick charge three port. Now if we take a look at my clearance, let's see what shape we're in. You can see now I've got probably seven or eight millimeters of space above there. And now when I use the right angle connectors, uh, I should have plenty of room to make the connection to the main wiring harness. So let's make the uh, harness now. So now I just need to uh, basically get my harness built. So this looks like it's about four or five inches and it's not really all that fussy. It's just gotta be able to flop around in the, the space below. You could use individual strands of wire. You don't have to use a, uh, a pair like this.
So that's firmly attached. Those are the ends that are gonna push into this socket from the factory harness. Now I'm gonna put the right angle connectors on. All right, so there's our Aston 1936 wiring harness. And those now can fit. And there's a plus and a minus marked on the back of the USB power adapter. And if we check again from the front, hopefully we have enough clearance. Just. And now if you, so that feels like it's just literally touching. Um, another option could be if I needed a little bit more is that since this is just a cheap eBay part or Amazon part, I could tip the blades over without breaking them and uh, to reduce the heights of those flanges just a little bit. And there we go. So I think I've got what I need. The only way to find out for sure now is to go try it out in the car. Okay, we're back in the car where we left off. I'm gonna hook up the, uh, getting really good at hooking up these connectors. So now it's time. So we had the three wires before this was the one for the illumination ring. We're not gonna use that at all. That's just the part that made the green glow. Um, so now we have the two wires to hook up from the uh, cigarette later. So the way this plug went on, the center pin is the hot. So it would have gone on like that. So the white of the harness is the positive, the black is the negative and so on my harness here, so it's black to black then, essentially. And I'm just gonna rotate that. And then the red goes in for the hot. So uh, we've got our clearance here. I'm gonna try and tuck all this up in this space here where my finger is. And let's see if we can get this to settle into place now. Plugs up here. Now I gotta make sure that these little ones that aren't used are out of the way. Tuck all that all down and voila. Fits like a charm. And now I have uh, a quick charge port tucked in here as well. So let's get on with getting the rest of the wiring finished and dressed up. Wow. Did you see that guy in that last clip? He looked exhausted and frustrated. Now this is future Steve here, and this video is starting to run really long. Uh, so I'm gonna actually cut off uh, the video here and split it into two parts. Next week I'm gonna release the, uh, the finishing portion of this video. I promise that I will get the, um, the wiring finished in that section. I don't always know how things are going to turn out. When I started recording this video, I didn't know I was going to have that problem with clearance on the PowerPoint, but I think I ended up working out a, a terrific solution and upgrade uh, to get the project done. Um, it actually spanned about two weeks of time, that last 20 minutes of footage you just watched, uh, because I you know, ran into the problem, had to figure out the solution, order the parts and all that. So um, I've been enjoying the project and hopefully the benefits of my struggle will make it much easier for you when it comes time for you to put it in your car. So up here, you're probably gonna find a link to the next uh, part of this video where I finish the project off. Um, down here, you can go ahead and subscribe and be automatically notified uh, when the next video comes out. Uh, here, you'll find a link to my companion blog article where I have links to all the special parts and supplies um, so that PowerPoint and that uh, fabric uh, tape, all those things are going to be linked here in my companion blog article and also in the description down below. And as always, I love to hear your comments. How would you have solved this problem? If you've already done this project and ran into it, how did you take care of it? So please leave those comments down below and we'll see you in the next one.